Alright, so we've done a little review of geometry and sine and cosine and tangent and we've introduced secant and cosecant and cosecant but only with angles in a triangle and so now we're going to talk about any angle meaning we can do negative angles, positive angles all the way around to 360 and beyond 360. In order to do that we have to think about triangles being placed on um, on the coordinate plane. And so 8, negative 15, find the values of six trig functions in standard position whose terminal side passes through 8, negative 15. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but let's estimate just this 8, negative 15, and we've got an angle, and it doesn't matter if it's gone around this way or it's gone around this way because um, it makes a triangle and we're going to make the angle right here, the angle we're going to be using is always relative back to the x-axis, always back to the x, because that puts the opposite side always in the same spot, the adjacent side always in the same spot. Because this way, your opposites, your opposites always going to be your y value, in this case negative 15, your adjacent's going to be your x value, 8. And so that's why we can deal with sine and cosine the same way every single time if we always make the triangle in the same spot relative to the x. So, sine of the angle, cosine of the angle, tangent of the angle. We can deal with tangent right away because it's the opposite over the adjacent. Negative 15 over 8. And in the same way we could deal with the cotangent. Cotangent of the angle, 8 over negative 15 because it's just the, reg the reciprocal. And realize that this negative can be out front. The whole thing is negative. It doesn't matter if the top or the bottom is negative. The whole thing is negative. In order to find sine and cosine we have to find this right here. And since we drew a right triangle it's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's 8 squared, negative 15 squared, and I'm not going to include the negative because it doesn't matter. We're squaring it. 8 squared plus 15 squared is 289. Square root of 289 is 17. And so it worked out beautifully that it was a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple meaning we've done the Pythagorean theorem and all of the numbers are pretty. So sine is opposite the y value over hypotenuse, the radius of the circle here, um, which is negative 15 over 17. The cosecant, the reciprocal, of the sign. Remember how the S and the C are the ones that match up? Weird like that. Cosine is the adjacent to the angle, the 8, over the hypotenuse, 17. And the reciprocal of the cosine is the secant, 17 over 8. We're just flipping it over. Things to notice. You can have trig functions that are positive and negative doesn't make a difference. We'll talk about how the signs have a pattern with them, but really if your y value is negative, the sine and the cosecant are going to be negative. If your y and your x have opposite signs, meaning not a negative and a negative, when you do the tangent, you're also going to get a, a negative because a negative divided by a positive is a negative, or a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So we talk a lot about Sokotoa and the opposite over the hypotenuse. But keep in mind that what we just dealt with was some xy where the sine or the y value, sorry, the opposite or the y value was always across from the angle. So the sine used to be opposite over hypotenuse, but in terms of what we just dealt with, it was the y value divided by the r. The cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent in this one was 
8, or the x value, divided by r. And the tangent, in this case, was the opposite over the adjacent, or the y divided by the x. So, specific to the unit circle, the unit circle, and the unit circle, we can have slightly different definitions, and that's why we're dealing with the unit circle. In the unit circle, r equals 1, and so in the unit circle, the sine value is just going to be the y, because y divided by 1 is just y. x divided by 1 is just x, and in the unit circle it's still going to be y divided by x. But in the unit circle the r value is 1, and that's what's beautiful about the unit circle. You only have to know the y value, you don't have to divide. So, what you have to remember about the r value, it's the hypotenuse, it is always going to be positive. Always positive. True about the x and y value, sometimes it's positive or negative, depending on the situation. So, let's think about this. Think going around the quadrants, we label this one the first, because that's the first one you come across, the second, the third, and we like to be fancy so we use Roman numerals. Um, in the first quadrant, imagine your triangle, you have your y, and your x, and your r. All of them are positive. We've gone to the right, and so the x is positive. We've gone up, and so the y is positive. And so the sine value is going to be positive, the y value. The cosine is the x, and the y divided by the x is positive as well. Go to the second quadrant. The x is negative the y is still positive. And so what changes? Well, the cosine, because that deals with the x, or the adjacent side, I'm going to put the angles in here as well. The cosine is now negative. The y value is still positive, and because tangent deals with well, the one divided by the other, it's going to be negative. If we deal with it in the third quadrant, We've got x is negative, but now y is negative as well. And so the sine value is going to be negative. The cosine is going to be negative because both the x and the y. But the tangent is now positive because both of those are negative. Negative divided by a negative makes a positive ratio. And in the fourth quadrant, we've got a positive x but a negative y. And so now the sine value, the y value, is going to be negative. Cosine, because it deals with the adjacent, or the positive x, is positive. And the tangent is a negative divided by a positive, and so it's a negative. Do not memorize this table. It makes common sense. I just wanted to look at it so you saw all of the different combinations. Don't memorize it. Think about when the y is positive, or when the y is negative. That has to do with the sine, S-I-N-E, not the positive or negative. Cosine is negative on the left because that's where the X's are negative. Um, one acronym that people like to use is all students take calculus. And so what we're talking about is all of them are positive here. The sine is positive in the second quadrant. Notice only in the second quadrant is the sine positive. The tangent is positive in the third quadrant because it's a negative divided by a negative, and the cosine is positive in the fourth one. Again, I don't like to use this because I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to make sense of when they're positive and when they're negative.